Hey everyone, Ryan from e Bike Escape, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the KBO Ranger cargo electric bike. So let's get into it. Before we get into the review, if you are looking to purchase any KBO electric bike, please do us a favor and check out the link in the description. Clicking that link before you make your purchase is a free and easy way to help support eBike Escape. Thanks in advance for your support. We'll also throw some links down in the description, our electric bike accessories list, top eBike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page where we track all the deals on the electric bike brands that we follow. With that, let's get in to the KBO Ranger. Now, when I first saw this electric bike announced, I knew I had to review it. I love cargo electric bikes, and even more, I love value-priced electric bikes. And the KBO Ranger is currently priced at $16.99, and they sometimes run promotions. So again, be sure to check out our electric bike discounts code page in case this bike happens to be on sale. But I think for that price, you're not going to find anything better spec wise because I do feel like this bike is very well spec'd. And I have reviewed a couple other KBO electric bikes, the KBO Hurricane, as well as the KBO Breeze. They're more commuter style electric bikes. So the brand has been around for a little bit but I'm most excited about the cargo electric bike because bikes like this are just so versatile and especially at that price point, it's definitely worth considering. Now, as I go through this, I will talk about the optional accessories we have on this electric bike. And another thing I wanted to point out is that this is a step through frame, so very accessible. And you can see that they did their best to keep the weight as low as possible. Of course, that's really great when you have kids back here. It helps keep you low to the ground and keep you more stable while riding. All right, with that, let's start in the front of the bike here. 20 inch wheels by three inches wide. Definitely a more city tread here. You can see there's actually no knobs on these. So this is definitely an electric bike that is set up for paved paths or riding in the city. I do like that they went with three inch wide tires because of course that's going to provide some additional comfort. With these wider tires, you can ride with them on lower pressure and that helps make up for the lack of a front suspension. You can see we have a rigid front fork here and these are CST tires and they do have a reflective sidewall on them. That's going to of course help you be seen at night. And if you are curious, these are the CST Big Boat. This video is sponsored by Tannis. We're really excited to have Tannis as our first sponsor here at eBike Escape. Getting flats on an e-bike can be especially difficult to fix, so why not help prevent them in the first place? Tannis Armor inserts are inserts that go inside your tire, providing 15 millimeters of protection at the base and two millimeters of protection on the sidewalls. Tannis makes purchasing the liner super simple. Simply go to their website, type in your tire size, it spits out the liners you need, don't forget the tubes. Then you can either install them at home by yourself or take them to your local trusted bike shop. Well, we do know there are many e-bike manufacturers that offer Tannis tire liners on their website. If you go directly to Tannis' website, we have negotiated a discount code for eBike Escape viewers. Discount code can be found in the description below. Thanks Make to Tannis for sponsoring this video. video. Moving on to the brakes. So we have mechanical disc brakes. Again, something I expect at this price point, but they actually went with the Tektro Aries mechanical disc brakes. Some brakes I am very familiar with. It is name brand, which I really like. And it is a component that you see on many budget priced electric bikes, but they just perform really well as far as mechanical disc brakes go. We have 180 millimeter rotors, both front and rear. Another thing with this wheel is it is a quick release, so you can simply undo this and pop off the front wheel in case you ever needed to do so. 
And this bike does come with some accessories. You can see we have the plastic fenders up here in the front. Now, before I forget, there's one thing that I wanted to point out that I wish this bike had, and I'm not sure if it will be able for them to add in the future due to the frame design, but many cargo electric bikes come with what are called deflopulators. I'm not making that up. But what it does is it is, it is a spring that attaches from here and to the frame, and it helps keep your front tire from moving left or right. Of course, that helps with stability while you're riding, though I do feel like this is a pretty stable electric bike as far as cargo electric bikes go. But you'll notice on this bike, depending on where the weight is when it's on its stand, this tire can kind of just turn sideways and the deflopulator will prevent that from happening. So something that I wish they included on this electric bike, maybe they will include it on a future generation. Now you'll note we do have the optional front rack and basket installed on this. KBO hooked us up with all the accessories so we could talk a little bit more and show them off in this video. We'll put the price of this set on the screen. Something to note is that when you purchase the front rack and basket, you do need to move the front light which you can see is now tucked underneath the basket here. And just know that when it is mounted here, when you move the handlebars, that light isn't going to move. Whereas when it is mounted to the place where it comes from the factory, the light will move when you move the handlebars. Here's a look at that front light. It has two LEDs, kind of a unique looking front light. Now what I always say with these front lights is they're definitely better at night Though for daylight visibility, I always recommend external rechargeable lights because you can put them on flashing mode and it helps other people see you while on the road. Now, what I really like about this front basket here is it's nice and large, so you can have plenty of storage up here and it comes with this really nice wood base. So if it were me, I'd probably find some kind of bag that sits nicely in here and then you can kind of tie it down if you wanted to put some groceries. Because the rack isn't super deep, there's going to be a limited amount of things that you can simply put in here without worry of them falling out. But nonetheless, really like the large size of it. And of course, with the front rack, you could potentially put your own basket up here as well. We have KBO branding on the head tube, and I always like to point out the cable management. They simply have some of these Velcro straps here, keeping the cables in a bundle. I would have liked to see some wrapping. There's some companies that just do an excellent job on keeping these cables nice and clean up here. But what I do like is that the cables are very nicely integrated into the frame on the left side of the frame here. Before we get into the cockpit, I just wanted to point out the riding position here. You can see they have some stem risers here, which lift the handlebars up a little bit. You may want to consider an additional stem riser here if you wanted the handlebars even higher. This is a more aggressive or forward-leaning riding position. I imagine some people who are riding this electric bike very often may want to be in a little bit more of an upright riding position. Of course, an adjustable stem can help with that as well. So some accessories you may want to consider. And again, these handlebars are just nice and simple. There's a slight swoop to them, but they're basically flat bars. Let's start over here on the left side. So we have the faux leather grips that we see on many electric bikes. They are not locking. If you want to upgrade these, check out our video on the Ergon grips. Those are great locking grips that also work with bikes that have twist grip throttles. I already talked about the Tektro brakes, but we also have Tektro levers. They have a little rubber grip here, which helps with comfort. And an additional thing that I like about these Tektro brakes is they have an integrated bell. Sounds really nice. And of course, as we see on almost every single electric bike, we do have the motor cut off. So as soon as you hit the brakes, it's going to cut off power to the motor. Before we get into the display, let's talk about the shifter. We have the Shimano Sys Index thumb shifter, basic component that we see on many electric bikes. And again, on the right side, we have a right hand twist grip throttle. I personally prefer the twist grip throttles. Just be careful when you're hopping on this electric bike or you're having someone else ride it because you can easily accidentally hit the throttle. And of course, if it's not in pedal assist zero, that throttle is going to engage and the bike is going to take off on you. So something to be aware of if you're new to electric bikes. 
Okay, let's jump into the display. So we have a power button here on the bottom. I already turned the display on and then we have the pedal assist up button and down button. You can see we have the energy bar for battery capacity in the top and we have the speed, nice and large, front and center, pedal assist in the on the left hand side here. Pedal assist zero, obviously no power. One, two, three, four, and five. And I did turn the lights on. You can do so by pushing and holding the pedal assist up button. So that's going to turn them off now. And we can get additional information in the bottom here. Odometer, trip, battery current voltage, current operating current. And according to the manual, we also have remaining mileage. And then finally, we have time, which the manual lists as instrument boot time. And I believe we can get additional information by the speed here for max speed and average speed as well. That might be in the advanced settings. Next, let's move on to the battery. You can see we have a plug here. That's where you can charge the battery when it is inside the bike. Next, I'm going to remove the battery. Now, what's great is this battery is nicely integrated into what I'll call the down tube of the frame here. 48 volt, 17 and a half amp hour battery. Again, I talked about value pricing. It's a great value when you consider this battery capacity. 17 and a half amp hours is definitely above average when you're looking at electric bikes at this price. Put the keys in, turn it to the right, and then there is a little latch here. And pulling that towards me should remove the battery here. Okay, got the battery out here. And it is a little bit tricky to remove the battery, but there's definitely some clearance here. So just something to get used to with these batteries that are located beneath the frame. Again, a fairly large battery, 48 volts, 17 and a half amp hours. And we do have some indicator lights here, which is going to give you an idea of the current battery charge. Now with these batteries, I always really make sure they are locked into the frame because you don't want a battery falling out while you're riding. And again, pull the key out. And I always like to tug on the battery and make sure that it is very snug inside the frame. As far as other branding around this electric bike, KBO right here, as well as in the rear, their website is listed. For pedals, we have the Wellgo pedals that come on so many electric bikes. They get the job done if you wanna customize your electric bike, perhaps you want some orange ones to match this frame, you can certainly upgrade, get a bigger platform, something that's a little bit more grippy or even less grippy if you'd like. Now this bike has a dual kickstand and it does not come in contact with the pedals, which is always really nice. And what I do like about this kickstand is they put some rubber feet on here, makes the bike feel really stable. Just a note though, these bikes aren't necessarily made to be loaded while the kickstand is down. So just something to keep in mind when you're perhaps, probably more importantly, when you're putting a child up here, you maybe don't wanna actually have the kickstand down. Just be careful. For the cables, the cables come underneath the frame right here and are running along the frame. We do have an externally mounted controller here. It's actually pretty well hidden. And of course, that's also nice for any maintenance you might need to do if you need to replace it. And again, I think it's hidden pretty well here. Of course, there are some electric bikes that have the controller completely hidden. In the rear here, the rear wheel, of course, is bolted on and we do have a torque arm, which I really like. That helps keep the wheel locked in place. Now with the KBO Ranger, I already talked about the optional front rack and basket, but they do actually include these running boards, which I really like. Of course, you're really gonna want that if you're having a passenger. You can also rest your pannier bags on here or whatever you're using to haul any cargo. And you also get this nice rear rack again with the wood platform. Now, what is not included in that price is what KBO calls the fence. This surrounds your child or whoever is riding on the back of this electric bike, helps protect them. If I were going to be riding this electric bike with kids very often, I'd strongly consider this. We'll put the price on the screen of this. And I'd also consider putting some kind of pad here for a passenger to help keep them a little bit more comfortable on top of this wood platform. 
Let's talk about this seat quick. This is a KBO branded seat and it actually has a handle back here. That's actually nice when you're taking the bike off the kickstand, you can kind of grab it here. And I would say this saddle is better than average. I actually found it pretty comfortable. Of course, it's personal preference. So if you want something more comfortable, check out our electric bike accessories list. We have a handful of options listed that I see many people purchase. I do have this seat post at its minimum insertion point, something to be aware of on any electric bike that you are purchasing. But when you're watching the third person riding footage towards the end of the video, just keep that in mind, I'm six feet tall. Now I can't say definitively, but you might be able to purchase a longer seat post and that will perhaps have a minimum insertion point so you can actually raise the seat a little bit higher if you're taller than I am. Maybe someone in the comments can help us out with that question. In the rear, we have a light that is integrated into the battery. When you hit the brake, it actually flashes. And when you turn the lights on the bike, it's actually always on. And then when you hit the brakes, it flashes. Again, we have a rear fender. Again, that comes installed, which of course is really nice. Saves you some time. Now it's going to be a little bit tricky to show you, but in the rear, we have a Shimano Altus derailleur. It's a very common component that we see on many electric bikes from one to $2,000. Gets the job done, but is on the entry level side of Shimano components. And there is, an, a, there is a barrel adjuster if you need to adjust the shifting at all. And they do include this derailleur guard as well, which I like. In the rear, we have 14 to 28 teeth. And in the front, we have a dual sided chain ring, 46 teeth. Really like the dual sided, just an additional touch helps keep your pants clean. Of course, protects the cogs as well. The motor cable does come on the right side of the bike right here. That's what this cable is. And you can see we have some other cables as well running along the bike here. And of course the rear light cable comes actually through the fender here and runs along the fender, which is really nice. Keeps this cable nice and hidden. In the rear here, we have a KBO branded 750 watt sustained motor. So be sure to stay tuned. We're gonna get into some first person riding footage and see what this motor can do. Okay, first person riding footage on the KBO Ranger. I will note before I started this video, I went ahead into the advanced settings and tried to change the top speed, though that didn't seem to make any difference of how fast the top speed will go. So just a note, if you find anything different, let me know in the comments section below to help out others who are considering this electric bike, but I personally wasn't able to get it any faster. The throttle kicks off. All right, let's get on with the test. Throttle only, speedometer app by Cool Nix here, testing the speed along with the display. Three, two, one, throttle only. 11, 13, 16, 18, 20 miles an hour. 21. And that's about what I was hitting before, really hovering around 21 miles an hour. So they're definitely trying to stick with the designation of a class two electric bike, 750 watt sustained motor as advertised by KBO. And of course the throttle kicking off as we hit the 20 or so miles per hour. Let's go ahead and turn the pedal assist off. I do get the question fairly often. Can you ride whatever electric bike I'm reviewing with no pedal assist? And usually the answer is yes, though you're not going to go very fast. I just shifted down into fifth gear. It's a little bit windy right now. I'm going about nine miles an hour. Again, you have a little bit of additional weight from this being a cargo electric bike. The biggest problem, of course, is going to be any hills they're going to be a significant uh, challenge. But flat ground, definitely doable. Of course, you can shift really far down if you wanted to. And just to note, the throttle does not work in pedal assist zero. Okay, let's go ahead and go in the various pedal assist modes. And I'll shift gears as well. Here we go, pedal assist level one. Definitely feel a little bit of power there. Now from a start, it's gonna feel a little bit more powerful than if you're already going, just something uh, to keep in mind. I do feel like this is a pretty powerful electric bike. 
And second gear is probably too low. I think I would shift up to third. And we're going about 10 miles an hour or so. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level two. Definitely feel the motor kick on there. Fourth gear, maybe even fifth gear. That feels pretty good. I kind of like to ride with a nice leisurely cadence, but also putting in some work myself. Now we're going about 14 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into Pelsis level three. Again, I do feel the motor kick on more. And I think this is where I'm gonna to have to go into sixth gear. That feels pretty good. Probably could even go into the seventh gear. We'll wait for that though. I'm hitting 14, 15 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into Pelsis level four again. Not sure if you can hear it, but the motor kicked on even more. And this is where, really where I'd like to go in the seventh gear. 17, 18 miles an hour. This feels like a really good cadence. 18 miles an hour, seventh gear, still providing plenty of power myself. Though I imagine here, when I go into pedal assist level five, I might experience a little bit of ghost pedaling. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level five. And yeah, my, my legs are really spinning now. It's not impossible to provide my own power, though it is more difficult, especially if you don't really wanna be pedaling at such a fast cadence. And again, we're hitting that 21 or so miles per hour in pedal assist level five. So that's how the bike performs on flat ground. Well, let's see how it does up our hill climb test. Okay, here we are at the hill climb test. This is the hill that we test out all of our electric bikes that we review so you can compare and contrast. The hill looks much smaller on the GoPro than what it is in real life. So we'll put the specs on the screen as well as a photo just to give you an idea of just how steep it is. First test will be throttle only. We'll get up to speed before the hill starts. We'll see what this 750 watt sustained motor can do. I have to imagine that it's going to perform just fine based on my experience already riding it. It's good to know when you have a cargo electric bike that it is capable though, especially if you're putting perhaps kids on the back or lots of groceries or whatever you plan to haul. All right, hill started 16 miles an hour, 15. And really I view anything 15 or around there is pretty darn impressive and really is what I see on many electric bikes. There's 14 uh, that have 750 watt motors that perhaps peak higher. So it looks like 14 might be the lowest speed and I will say I had 60, 70-ish percent battery when I started riding today. And of course you get the drop here. It's showing the battery only has two bars. I know that's not the case though. That's just how it goes with some of the displays because you're drawing on the battery, just reads lower temporarily. And we are just about to the top of the hill. So minimum speed, 14 miles per hour, very impressive. It's always nice to know that whatever electric bike you're looking at purchasing can handle a hill while not pedaling. But I always recommend getting some exercise and of course conserving some battery so you can go on a longer ride. So let's go back down the hill and I'll do the hill test while pedaling. All right, hill climb test while pedaling. And just a note, as I was coming down the hill, I hit about 25 miles per hour. And while these brakes are mechanical disc brakes, they still perform very well. I was able to come to a complete stop. Obviously they're not hydraulic brakes, but for the price, these are some of my favorite mechanical disc brakes that come on electric bikes. All right, I'm gonna just give myself a little bit of throttle just so I can shift down here. All right, pedal assist level one. I can even shift up here, second gear. 
We'll see what happens when the hill really starts. All right, pedal assist level one, second gear, putting in some effort for sure. But this would be totally doable if you wanted to go up the hill and conserve some battery. Going about eight miles an hour. And I could shift down and just keep in mind with the cadence sensor, I can even slow my cadence. And as long as those pedals are spinning, the motor is going to help me. You can see I dropped down to six miles an hour. All right, let's go ahead and go on the pedal assist level two. I think I'd probably stay in second gear here. Again, going about eight, nine miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level three. This is probably where I could shift up third gear, maybe even fifth gear, sorry, fourth gear. Still providing some effort, 12 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level four. Could even shift up to fifth gear here. Going about 13 miles an hour. And fifth gear here, or sorry, fifth pedal assist and fifth gear. And I could even go out in the sixth gear here. Again, 15 or so miles an hour, 16. And we are just about to the top of the hill. So no doubt, no problem going up the hill on this cargo electric bike from KBO. All right, with that, Let's get into some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the KBO Ranger. The KBO Ranger is unquestionably the best value cargo e-bike that I found. If you don't believe me, do a quick Google search. Most of them start at $2,000 and go up from there. At $1,699, shoppers who weren't even considering a cargo electric bike now can. My wife and I are both huge fans of cargo e-bikes both for grocery getting and kid hauling. So what did my wife think? She thought the Ranger felt much zippier than our rad wagon due to its much more powerful motor. She also noted it was easier to handle a result of its shorter 47 inch wheelbase, though it's still heavy at just shy of 88 pounds according to my scale with the front rack and basket as well as the fence installed. She too commented on the lack of a deflopilator as she put the bike on the kickstand. And finally, she liked the display where she could easily see her current speed. Two thumbs up for the KBO Ranger from her perspective. I personally liked that the running boards are included, something KBO could have easily made an extra accessory. And really the whole bike is outfitted nicely. The name brand mechanical disc brakes, Shimano parts throughout, and of course, the larger than average 17 and a half amp hour battery that disappears into the frame. The 20 by three inch tires were a great choice for comfort, but it also helps keep your center of gravity as low as possible. Something especially important as you add cargo. Speaking of cargo, the KBO Ranger has an impressive 400 pound payload capacity. As with any e-bike, there are considerations to take into account and some things I noted as an experienced cargo e-bike rider, so let's dig into the finer points. Yes, this bike feels nimble for a cargo e-bike, but being the wheelbase is shorter, you have less cargo carrying capacity lengthwise in the rear. So the rear rack can only hold one passenger as opposed to some cargo e-bikes, which can hold two. The rear rack width also means it might be trickier to find a child seat to fit on the rear if you have younger children that need to be strapped in. For grocery getting and cargo though, there's still plenty of space and you can always add the optional front rack and basket. Next, there are no plastic guards in the rear to keep feet and clothing out of the rear wheel. The frame design almost negates the need for it, but it's something to keep in mind. Finally, I would have liked to see a little more seat height adjustment. At six feet tall, I would have raised the seat up slightly. And as I already discussed, those who plan for longer rides or just prefer a more upright riding position will certainly want to add an adjustable stem. When the Ranger was first announced, I was a bit skeptical of a cargo e-bike being priced so low 
but after trying it out for myself, the Ranger delivers. KBO might not be as well known as some other brands offering cargo e-bikes, but the Ranger is certainly a compelling offering. If you have experience with KBO's customer support, please let us know your experience down in the comment section below to help others who are considering purchasing a bike from KBO. Again, link in the description if you plan to buy a KBO and you found this video helpful and also want to help support the channel. Thank you for helping us out and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.